Today we're going to be making buttons. Um, I found uh, that buttons are very difficult to make in Photoshop Elements, um, at least to get them uh, realistic looking. Um, I have here um, some buttons that I have that are commercial use off of uh, Action FX. I tried to pick some more common looking buttons uh, so that I could try to duplicate making them in Photoshop Elements to uh, make them look realistic. Um, and I, I could not do it and I was like, oh, so this is why I've never done a button tutorial before or actually made buttons myself. Um, I have used uh, the commercial use buttons in some of my freebies before and you can recolor them, um, do a whole bunch of things with them. Um, but uh, I want to teach you how to make buttons um, from scratch. Although I recommend really going to your sewing box and getting a bunch of buttons and scanning them in and extracting them, that's going to be your uh, best bet, best way to go. Um, so uh, for this lesson, um, if you uh, want to make a button from scratch and then want to scan in some buttons, uh, do uh, some of both. That would be a good idea. But this green button here I've made and I actually had to go into uh, the full version of Photoshop to play with it. And this is um, totally from scratch. And I was trying to make it to look like this button, which I think is the most classic looking regular button out there. And uh, I think I've got it pretty close. But um, I had to go to the full version to get their layer styles. And I actually have um, two layer styles that I'm going to give to you that you can use to make this button. Um, this one, I couldn't get, it's supposed to say rim, but I couldn't get it to say um, how many button one rim, <laughs> which is uh, this edge around here. And the other one is the base um, down here in the bottom. This is actually just two layers that I utilize to create this. So um, let's go ahead and um, get started. What you want to do first is to click on the View drop-down menu and then choose Grid. And I'm going to uh, move up here um, out of the way of all this other stuff so we can have room to make it. Um, we're going to uh, create a new layer, which um, I can't see. Let's move this up a little bit. We're going to create a new layer, and um, then we're going to make a circle. So I'm going to activate the rectangular or the optical elliptical marquee tool. And um, you'll recall from other tutorials around here, I have my grid sent to, set to inches. Um, I guess we could review that. It's under Edit, Preferences, and uh, Guides and Grid. And I have it set to inches. I think the default is pixels. Every one inch, because I identify with inches. Um, more than I do pixels because of course that's what I've used my entire life and in this case um, I thought I had it set for every uh, two sub uh, divisions um, but it's set to four and that's working fine for me so I'm going to leave it there for right now um, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to start here on the top line now it kind of doesn't matter where we're going to start um, because then I'm going to draw a circle all the way down to this line and you're going to see uh, it snapped right in there so it's um, two inches uh, wide. Um, it doesn't matter how big this is, I'm actually, that green one I had is too big, I would make it smaller before I um, gave it out 
um, but we do want things to be centered in, in proportion. And so if you even wanted to make it a little smaller, you know, one inch by one inch or something to start out, you could, but I found this, this just easiest to follow. And then sometimes I can just hit my right arrow key, which is what I'm doing now, and move it so it meets the right and left edges. And so I can have a center line right here in intersection. If your arrow keys are not working, sometimes they don't. If you hover over this line until you get this little uh, arrow with a square by it, you can click down and drag and put it in place also. So now I have um, my circle and I have a new layer with nothing on it. Um, I've picked uh, a color and I have that for my foreground color. And now you could use the paint bucket to fill this in, but I have heard, and I don't know whether it's true, but using the paint bucket sometimes causes um, some more jagged edges, and I don't know why that is. So um, since I've heard that, I tend to hit the Alt Backspace key, and I fill that in with the foreground color. If you hit Control and Backspace, it puts in the background color. But Alt Backspace puts in the foreground color. Now I'm going to hit Control D. Then I'm going to um, click on this layer and hit Control J to duplicate the layer. And um, this is going to be the rim, and we need to uh, cut out the um, section of the rim uh, to uh, uh, the middle of the circle of the rim. I'm trying to think of too many things at once. Um, what uh, I tried doing at first was um, to control click on the layer and go to the select drop down menu and contract and I contracted it by about 80. Now I want you to look at, let's zoom in, that circle you can see that it's got um, it's not it's got little bumps right here and here um, it just did not uh, make a nice circle when you're contracting it and it really shows up when you're making this so I would not recommend doing that method um, even though that makes it instantly centered for you I would go ahead and get that uh, elliptical marquee tool hold down your shift key and just draw another um, circle and I'm going to use my arrow keys once again uh, to um, eye this and uh, center it up. I'm kind of looking, it's about this far from this line and it needs to go a little more to the left here. So these two are about the same distance apart from this line. And then I'm gonna look at this one and this one and that seems to be about centered. And unfortunately, that's going to be the best way I think that we can um, do that is, is to eye it. But you do have your grid to make it look uh, pretty close. And then I'm going to make sure I'm on the correct layer. And um, I'm going to turn this off just so you can see what happens, the uh, base layer. And um, hit the delete key and you can see that that knocks that out. And I'm going to hit control D. Now, um, I have... Uh, some layer styles that I'm going to give you that I made and this first one is um, for the rim and so I'm going to apply it and the second one is for the base and I'm going to apply it and um, I instantly have a nice looking button um, except for I need some holes so next we're going to make the holes uh, I'm going to once again create a new layer and um, there are several ways that you can do this. You could just get 
your eraser tool and make your hole uh, your, use your bracket keys to make your brush a small enough size and just click right, well it helps if you're on the right layer. Um, you could be on the base layer and just click to delete that and you can see I have um, some stuff in the uh, layer style that automatically makes that look like it's bent in. Uh, but I do not recommend doing that for several reasons. So we're going to go back to this new layer and I am going to um, get my brush tool, use my bracket key, um, to make it small enough. And I'm just going to click right down in the center. Well, actually, this is not how I did it. That's not how I did it. <laughs> I have to think of how I did it. Let's go back to the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to make that black my foreground color. And what I'm going to do is hold down my shift key again and make a selection, a small selection. And I'm going to uh, hit Alt Backspace and fill that in. See, there's so many ways of doing things. And uh, I, I remember playing with all these. And this is the best method I found to do it. Uh, now I'm going to hit Control J three times and now I have this little black dot on um, four layers and I'm just going to grab each of them and spread them out so that they are one in each of these um, boxes. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the first one and the second one well nope first one and and this one, I'm just going to, I'm holding down my control key to select both of these so they're both the active layer. And now these two are uh, both selected. And I'm going to go to the align and I'm going to click left edges to make sure that those are together. Now I'm going to try to get uh, the first one and the other top one. And these two are selected, so I'm going to align top edges and uh, I'm going to uh, follow through, let's see, these two and align the bottom edges. And they're not moving at all, so I had them aligned pretty well all, already. Um, let's see, I want this one and this one. Now I got these two and I'm going to align the right edges. And so I have those four perfectly lined up, and I'm going to highlight all four of them. I'm holding down the control key while I'm clicking here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to merge the layers. So now I have my button holes um, on, as a pattern, and I can even name them here so I can go back and reuse them later. I have them here as a pattern, and um, I can even turn them off. And I'm going to control click on them, click on this base layer, and hit the delete key. And they all delete instantly. But um, you'll notice what I did here on this other button. Um, compare this one to this one. Having those uh, circles straight, uh, horizontal, and vertical uh, just doesn't lend to anything that's real realistic. Um, it looks a little bit better slanted. And so now that we have our buttonholes made, that's easy to do. I'm going to hit the undo button. And um, I'm going to go back to these and click on them. And I'm going to just rotate them a little bit. Now I'm going to make them invisible again. Control and then click on the layer style to get the marching ants. Click on the base layer and hit delete. And now I have a very nice looking button. Um, filter, whoops, view grid. I'm going to turn that off. And uh, you can see it looks just like this green one. Very nice button. Probably um, before I would share it, I'm going to um, grab both of them. And 
gonna maybe make that button a little smaller and uh, of course turn off your background layer and then use your crop tool get uh, pretty close to the edges and and then now I, this is ready to save as a PNG as a button um, then I can always hit undo to bring back uh, this original um, what's really great is uh, having string there's I've read debates lots of debates on whether to have your buttons with or without string that you never see a button without string well you do in crafts um, you can go out and buy a big bag of buttons in the craft store and glue those buttons I have them on the outside of one of my albums um, out there as a decorative um, and lots of people glue on buttons like that for um, just for crafty decoration uh, of course you never see buttons without strings on shirts so um, a lot of people will offer buttons with and without strings in their kit um, I've tried to make strings in Photoshop elements that look realistic and it's really hard to do so what I would recommend once again is to get some string put, drop it on your scanner extract it and uh, utilize that um, this one here to me looks like a string that was probably scanned in and extracted we could probably even extract this one right off of here and uh, utilize it um, it, it would be a difficult extraction. It would help if I'm on the right layer. Um, yeah, it would be a difficult extraction, but I'm just going to make a quick one of it. Um, Control J. Now I have a little piece of string here on this layer, and um, I can drag this out. You can see it would need to be have some uh, recoloring uh, done on it, uh, maybe a little bit uh, more uh, extracting. It's not one to recolor fast enough, but um, I would have to work with it and play with it. But then I could actually move that. Let's move it on up. It's not the best string, <laughs> but uh, and I could reuse that uh, for um, my buttons. I could even offer that uh, in uh, my kit. Of course, do a much better job than I did just there extracting that out. And I duplicated it and I'm turning it and now I even have um, a string and and so I put a string on that button I guess I could have put it over here on uh, I gotta make it larger again on the button I just made and so um, if you want to add string, uh, that's what I recommend you doing. And you can um, offer several of those. So see, that doesn't look so bad with that string in there like that. Um, I really like this one that's tied on there like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, but you can see this is a bad extraction. Not everything at FX is uh, that great. I've had to go through and fix it. I've actually used this button before, but you can see um, some red down in there and uh, that's from whatever was below it um, and I have cloned out this little thing here before you have to really fix his stuff if you use it uh, but I could extract because this is commercial use that little uh, uh, 
that string and use it over and over in some of my other buttons. And uh, so let me just do a few more things just to give you some ideas. Um, I'm going to go back up here to uh, my base layer and I'm going to um, clear the layer style. So I have this here. Um, I'm actually going to uh, control D. Let's get this. I'm actually going to fill those holes back in. Whoops, let's fill them in with the right color. They're not wanting to fill in. There we go. Um, so I have my circle now again, and <coughs> um, what I can do is to get fancy and um, where is my, well, let's just make, let's just duplicate this base, control J, I have to decide what to, I want to do here, and I'm going to make, um, A larger circle and I'm just going to do this I showed you how to center it and I actually want it to be whoops larger than that so that my rim is going to be a lot thinner and um, I'm going to show you uh, how it doesn't work as well using just the bevels that come with a uh, photo with uh, Photoshop Elements, but I can add a rim to it there, and then if I wanted to, <coughs> I could duplicate that base again and draw. I'm just doing something random here. I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, but you can play with these things this way, um, just to give you some ideas, to give you some more inspiration, because buttons come in all different shapes and sizes. And um, in this case, I'm going to reverse my selection and hit enter. And then I'm going to apply a bevel, but then I'm going to um, change that bevel so it goes down. And I don't like the dark color on there. This is where it gets difficult doing this in Photoshop Elements and you need the full version of Photoshop. Uh, that doesn't really look that good. Let's try, you can try around the other ones, but I think you just can't get in uh, Photoshop Elements. There, that one's good. and so. There's another type of uh, button that you could do there, and then I can find my buttonholes, which got moved. <laughs> uh, we're going to uh, move them down here, find my base, and this one also. And then you can see you get a little bit of problems now. Your holes don't look right um, because uh, the layer style. So what I would need to do to make this actually work is um, to take this layer and this layer and merge them and then find my buttonholes. Put them in place and then knock out the holes so they're not centered. Um, so sometimes you have to merge layers together in order to get them to look right. Of course with my layer style that I have I had it set so um, there was a inner drop shadow on these uh, buttonholes on that base layer so it does look a little bit better having that than it does 
this. Now something else that you can do is to um, put use papers. So if I wanted um, to uh, use one of my papers, I don't have any here to do that, and uh, cut it with uh, one of the papers and apply uh, the shadows and things, um, I could do that. Uh, to make it match. You can get really creative with your buttons. Buttons come in all shapes and sizes, uh, but this is a basic button that I wanted to give you to get you started, and you can um, move forward from there to uh, let your imagination expand. And so I look forward to seeing your buttons and seeing how um, creative you can get with them. And uh, um, thanks for watching.